Engine number 12-1 this quarter became the first F-1 engine to be equipped with the new rigid high-pressure propellant lines. These offer several advantages over the former design, being lighter, more easily fabricated, and providing a reduction in pressure drop by eliminating internal restrictions. To reduce turbine back pressure, a new turbine exhaust manifold inlet has been designed and fabricated by Rocketdyne. This configuration provides improved flow and pressure distribution to the manifold and nozzle extension. The first Block II heat exchanger has been received and will soon undergo testing. The new unit has a shell configuration which eliminates the shroud formerly used while maintaining the required gas flow velocity. The F1 engine O84D type injector is now undergoing development test. This injector design appears to meet the flight rating test specific impulse and other required characteristics. At the Edwards rocket engine test site, F1 engine test stand number 1D was activated in June. This is the first of three new stands which will be used for production engine acceptance testing. At the Marshall Center, propulsion testing on the second F-1 production engine began on June 23rd and continued during the quarter in the modified S-1 stage test stand, which includes a simulation of S-1C tankage and ducting. Propulsion testing of the first production engine begun last quarter also continued. Construction of the F-1 engine static test stand at Marshall is now virtually complete with beneficial occupancy scheduled in September. Water flow checkout of the stand's deflector plate was performed on August 20th. Maximum flow is 136,000 gallons per minute. The first F1 engine firing on the new stand is set for mid-November. At Marshall's F1 turbopump facility, build-up and activation are in the final phases, and checkout has begun. The facility will provide a simulation of vehicle net positive suction head for both fuel and locks for turbo pump testing. Culminating a series of successful gimballing tests begun last quarter, the Rocketdyne J2 engine has demonstrated its ability to meet preliminary flight rating test requirements for gimballing during hot firing. This latest model gimbal assembly has gimbaled the J2 system in tests at the rate of 30 degrees per second to a maximum of 10 degrees. In initial altitude testing of the spark plug of the J2 engine's augmented spark ignition system, the plug was successfully operated in a vacuum environment to determine its characteristics in outer space. A corona effect is apparent as the plug operates through a 100,000 to 200,000 foot altitude range. Experimental studies to determine fuel flow uniformity of the J2 thrust chamber tubes were conducted by Rocketdyne this quarter in a high flow test chamber with 1,125 to 2,250 gallons of water per minute being pumped through the chamber. Rocketdyne assembly of flexible armored harnesses for all J2 engine electrical control and instrumentation harness wiring is underway. This will provide complete moisture protection, handling and abrasion protection, and short-term fire protection for the 14 individual harness assemblies in the J2 engine system. At the Marshall Center, construction of the J-2 engine test facility is approximately 85% complete, with beneficial occupancy expected in November. The facility will be used to static fire single hydrogen-fueled engines with thrust ratings up to 200,000 pounds for test durations up to 500 seconds. Redesign of the Saturn V instrument unit structure necessitated by revised vehicle loads was completed in August. Structural units, such as the facility's checkout unit, already delivered to the old design, will be used for tests not involving structural testing. Delivery of the first new IU structure to Marshall is due next quarter from General Dynamics, Fort Worth, Texas. At Marshall this quarter, 
a prototype of the heat exchanger which will be used in the instrument unit environmental control system underwent successful testing. The heat exchanger will provide temperature control for the IU equipment as well as for other instrumentation in the S4B stage just below by cooling a water methanol solution which circulates through the cold plates to which the various instrumentation devices are mounted. Around the IU will be located 16 such cold plates, one of which is depicted in this cutaway drawing. Similar panels will be used for the S4B instrumentation. Made of brazed aluminum, each panel is 30 inches square and one and one quarter inches thick. Contract negotiations are still in progress with international business machines selected last quarter as prime contractor to take over development and fabrication of the IU. Meanwhile, IBM has gone forward with its efforts in facilities and personnel buildup at Huntsville. Prototype ground support equipment for the S1C stage electrical and mechanical test control stations underwent test and checkout by Boeing at the Marshall Center during the report period. Ground support equipment, systems measuring device test consoles, and electrical harnesses for S2 stages were being assembled and checked out during the quarter at SNID's Compton, California facility. The remote power distribution rack, the first major item of deliverable GSE, was shipped to the Santa Susana Static Test Facility on July 10th to support the battleship test program. At Douglas Aircraft Company's Huntington Beach, California Systems Integration Laboratory, checkout of the initial set of the S-4B ground support equipment is nearing completion. The Systems Integration Lab Vehicle Simulator is also nearly finished. The simulator, which will include a J-2 engine, will be used to prepare checkout tapes for checkout of flight stages. At Marshall's Saturn V ground support equipment test facility, Brick and mortar construction is approximately 90% complete. The control room has been finished with beneficial occupancy granted August 1st. Installation of technical systems is scheduled to begin in September. Testing of various ground support equipment, such as this prototype S4B aft swing arm tip assembly, is being conducted for the Kennedy Space Center in temporary facilities at Marshall while construction of the GSE test facility is underway. This prototype S1C tail service mast is another item being tested at Marshall to prove the design concept of Launch Complex 39 GSE. Construction work on the Saturn V dynamic test stand at the Marshall Center is now virtually finished with completion scheduled in September. Marshall's 30 million pound capacity load test tower was practically completed this quarter with beneficial occupancy granted the last week in August. Initial use of the new facility for structural testing of an S1C intertank is scheduled in September. At Marshall's Saturn V barge dock and loading facility on the Tennessee River, dry excavation for the dock is complete. Pile driving is about 90% finished and the concrete work and pier have been started. Overall construction is approximately 40% complete. At Marshall's Mississippi Test Facility, construction continued this quarter at the three complexes. At the test complex, pouring of the foundation for the S1C dual position static test stand is approximately 25% complete. At the first S2 static test stand, Foundation work is approximately 55% complete. Excavation has been completed at the second S2 stand and pile driving is nearing completion. At the laboratory and engineering complex, construction continued on the office and administration building, data handling center, and telephone and terminal building. And at the support services complex, Work progressed on such facilities as the Emergency Services Building, MTF Warehouse, Site Maintenance Building, Central Heating Plant, and Electrical Substation. <laughs>